In today's episode, Dad warms up his singing chops. Me, 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 me. He's an expert at operating kitchen equipment. Way to say it. Wah! Yeah, that. Oh my God. And maybe he should see a doctor. So in, I don't know. Who got this? Dad got this. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Dad Got This. The heck is going on over here? Looks like I emptied out my entire pantry of gadgets and they're just here on the counter. Why? Because we're gonna use all of these to make one fantastic item. That fantastic item, beef short ribs on the bone. Not Kalbi style, not the Korean English cut style Kalbi rib, no. Like a barbecue style short rib. Dad was at the Polite Pig over at Disney Springs a couple weeks ago and did a review. You can go ahead and check that video out. I'll put it up here. And they had one of the most fantastic short rib dishes I've ever had. It had this glaze on it and it was wonderful. And I wanna make a short rib dish. I don't have the kind of time to go out and smoke it on my charcoal grill and do all that kind of stuff that I would like to do. So I'm gonna gadget it up. My wife doesn't really like smoke flavor that much anyway, so it's not a big loss. We're gonna sous vide it. We're gonna sous vide the short ribs, and then when they're done, we're gonna air fry the crap out of them and crisp them. It's gonna be fantastic. I can't wait. But to do that, I'm gonna need some space. So in, I don't know. That wasn't what I wanted to do. Take two. So to do that, we're gonna need some space. How do we get that space? We use the Jedi mind wipe. Nope, that's not it. We use the Jedi disappearance trick. One, two, three. Whew. I'm amazing, what can I say? Look at all the room we have for activities. I love that movie. If you know that movie, comments. Sous vide, in case you don't know, is one of my favorite ways to cook things. And I kind of became addicted to it when I first got my sous vide cooker to the point where my wife was annoyed that the thing was always going. She's, you're doing that again? Didn't complain about the food, just complained that I always had something going in the kitchen. But sous vide basically takes food vacuum seals it, cooks it in a water bath over a long period of time, and tenderizes the crap out of stuff while retaining moisture and flavor because it's all sealed in a bag and not escaping as it cooks. Restaurants have been doing it for years and years and years. Of course, it's a French technique. They invent everything for food. And it's become very popular lately now that some companies have made affordable versions of these sous vide cookers. I use an Innova. There's Juul, even Instant Pot has its own version that's built into their Instant Pot. So with our short ribs, we're gonna keep it really simple. We're gonna just do garlic powder, onion powder, and salt. With sous vide, you don't need to over season the crap out of stuff because a lot of stuff won't penetrate as much anyway. They've done a bunch of tests, a couple of my favorite vloggers and things like that. I've done tests and really these salt and the garlic powder and onion powder really are the ones that you taste the most. And I wanna keep it simple because I wanna give myself some sauce options for the ribs when they're done and cooked so I can glaze them differently and try a couple different options. So I wanna keep the seasoning on the ribs simple so I can sauce them how I want. If you think about a rib and a short rib especially, there's only inch, half inch of meat so it's not like you need to get the flavor all the way penetrated through because on that bite, if there's a bunch of flavor on the top, it's gonna be enough to flavor that entire bite of meat and everything under it. And you're not gonna have to be worried that the next bite's not gonna have any flavor because the next bite's the bone. You can't go lower. Ah! Dropping stuff again, man. So to season these up, 
We're using dad's favorite little spice shaker. Just break down and get one. Do I go over it in every video? Yes. Am I annoying about it? Yes. Should you get one? Yes. We're just gonna take equal parts of onion powder. and garlic powder. We're not putting the salt in the shaker only because I want to be able to control the precise amount of salt that gets on the meat. So we're just going to shake that sucker up and we're going to coat these. I'll probably do them on something other than this thing. Be right back. Now we're back. So this is about two pounds of short rib. It's not a lot. This is just for me, my wife, and my kid. So if you wanna make a little bit more, the nice thing about these recipes is the quantity isn't that big of a deal. The time doesn't change. The temp doesn't change. None of it really changes. So it's just, if you want more, put more in the bag, cook more. This is gonna be just enough for us. And we wanna season this, what I would call liberally. I love that word, liberally, with this seasoning. Can I do it? No look, no look seasoning. Let's see if I'm getting anything. Am I really seasoning anything or am I just throwing pixie dust all over the floor? Hey, I did it. Nope. I think maybe a little bit more for this guy. These are ready for the next step. <coughs> ah. Me, 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 me. Right, clear my throat. I forgot what I was gonna say. The next step is you gotta seal them. Seal them. How do you do that? This is a long cook. This is gonna cook for about 12 hours. I'm gonna put this in around five o'clock before we go somewhere tonight and it'll cook all the way till dinner tomorrow. So you want a really good seal on your bag. I wouldn't recommend using a Ziploc bag on this one, because there's bones and everything. I would recommend getting yourself a vacuum sealer like this one. So you get yourself a vacuum sealer and these do not have the pre-cut bags. I'm not using the pre-cuts. So you make yourself your bag just about long enough to get all your ribs in there. And since it's not a pre-cut bag, we've got to load it like this and seal that end. <sighs> Ooh, why did I, ooh, ah. Is it sealed yet? You sealed yet? How about now? That's the sound we wanted. Now that we've got the seal, I always do the turn in. And that keeps junk off of the very end part, which is where you're gonna reseal the bag and make sure you get a better seal. Load in your ribs, however they best fit. You wanna kind of keep them not stacked on top of each other. You want everything trying to get as much surface area as possible for the cook. So, hoping I can get these all in here. It's a little bit of like Jenga. That's not gonna work. A little, I guess more, more Tetris than Jenga. Because Jenga, I'd be pulling them out and they'd be trying to not fall down. Tetris is more of this. But I think I have Tetris myself into it quite well. And now I have a nice little packed section of short rib. Wash hands. Pop down. Oh, that's gonna be perfect. And then we're gonna set this to the moist setting, which it is on. Pop our bag in. So don't forget to do exactly what I just said. Very important. 
Ah, and then there's that sound we're hoping for. And now we've got some sealed. This has bones. A lot of the times, I like to double seal things that have bones only because I don't want my bag breaking and ruining my awesome meal that I'm cooking. So I will go ahead and double bag this. Are you done yet? Are you done yet? Sealed yet? How about now? How about now? Sealed. This one you don't have to do the fold on because, well, there's no, no gunk to get on it. And then we'll do the same thing and reseal this bag. So I repeated that thing I said last time because it was really important. Make sure you do that. And now we have a nice little package of goodness that's getting to get ready and go take a bath. A little hot tub action. Like I mentioned, we are going to sous vide this. To sous vide it, you need an immersion circulator. That's what this little tube looking thing is. All it does is heat and move water. That's it. Real simple thing. It's got a propeller on the bottom that spins, moves the water around and heats it. Moving the water around, make sure that all the water is the same temperature and it heats it to a really precise temperature. It's a, one of the most precise ways you can cook a piece of meat. The nice thing about it is you can't overcook the meat. It's almost impossible. You, can, you can't cook it past the temperature you want, I guess would be a great way to say it. Whoa, yeah, yeah, oh my God. Ah. Okay, my faucet has a thing, a button that does a shooting and it sometimes get clicked on and I didn't realize it and I just shot water all over. Let's try that again. To go ahead and sous vide things, you need to fill a container with water big enough to cover your food, plug in your circulator and let it do its thing. It'll come up to temperature. Once it's up to temperature, you put your food in the water and that's basically it. You just wait till the time is uh, over for the cook time. And the nice thing about sous vide is you can totally over time things because we're gonna cook these to about 134. If the water is at 134, there is no technical way for this piece of meat to reach higher than 134 degrees. So you technically cannot cook it past your desired done temp. Now, it's gonna go up a little bit when you go ahead and do the sear and you have to account for that. So most people will cook things a little bit rarer than they like their finishing temp to be so that it gives them room for their sear. I like medium rare, so that's why we're going with this 134. The other thing you have to account for, which I just think I screwed up, is water displacement. When you put something of this mass in this container, the water is going to displace. I'll show you what I just screwed up. So we'll see, because there's a max line on here somewhere right there there's a max line right there you can't go past that so once i put this in here see what happened we shot right up to the max line which is actually okay that's fine so i almost overdid it i was right at the level we'll take that out for now because we're going to want this to come up to temperature before we do it think of sous vide as a the hot tub for your food. It just sits there and gets all chill in a little hot tub and gets warmed up until you're ready to go ahead and finish it and sear it in the oven. Hot tub, wanna kiss myself.
That's a terrible, terrible Eddie Murphy doing James Brown. Oh, I don't even think, I, I don't think that should even be in the vlog. That's terrible. But so to, we're going to go ahead and plug this sucker in over here. Will you reach? Can you reach? Can you reach? Ugh. Okay. And the last thing I cooked was 131. So we got to go up to 134 and hit start. And it gets all hot tubby. And the water starts moving around and it starts heating up. So my water is about 97 degrees right now. So it'll take a little while for this to get up the temp. And I said, I'm going to put these in later, probably around five o'clock tonight. And they'll go for 12 hours and be perfect timing for dinner tomorrow. So the next time I'm going to check in with you guys, it's going to be a new day. Yeah, new day. It's a new day. It is just shy of 24 hours later. It's tough to time things for 12 hours for sous vide cooks because if you want to eat at six o'clock, you'd have to put it in at six o'clock in the morning. I put this one in yesterday in the evening around five or six o'clock. So we're just shy of 24 hours. You might notice some ping pong balls. What's going on with that? So the ping pong balls on there, they just keep everything more even. The unit doesn't have to work as hard because the heat doesn't escape and the water doesn't evaporate as much and you don't have to worry about your food getting uncovered and then not being edible. If it comes out of the water and part of it's not exposed for a long period of time, you really can't eat that because that part didn't cook and it was definitely in an unsafe temperature and it's just bad. We're gonna pull this and then we're gonna dry it and we're gonna air fry the crap out of it and we're gonna make a little bit of a sauce. To do that, we gotta unplug and get rid of these ping pong balls. Let's pull. Ah, ah. Short ribs out. Let me magic magic this stuff away so you can see what I'm doing. Abracadabra. So we have our cooked beef, short ribs, which were double bagged so that they could not break. We'll open them up. Bag number one. And you'll see lots of juice in here. We can use that juice to make a gravy if we wanted. I'm not making a gravy tonight because these are just gonna be simply served with a glaze. And open your bag. It smells awesome. These things smell fantastic. An important step of sous vide is to make sure you dry the crap out of them. The more moisture that's on there, the less the energy from the heat goes to crisping things as it does go to evaporating that moisture. So you really wanna to try to break a plate. Ooh. That was not good. To dry the heck out of these things. So that way, when we air fry them, they crisp up really nice. And I can already tell I'm gonna be happy with these. They're not falling apart tender. These are gonna be the perfect tenderness, I think, for me. I wasn't shooting for a pot roasty texture. I still wanted to have a little bit of a bite to them. Short ribs is a little bit of a tough meat, so sous vide is a perfect way to tenderize them. All right, we've got these pretty well dried off. Let's go ahead and make a quick glaze. Nothing special here. We're just gonna do honey, soy, and ginger. Now, one thing I have noticed in the air fryer, these sugary glazes will burn like you do not believe. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna air fry them for a little bit first and then we'll glaze them. Otherwise, it will just become charred. These might just glaze for seconds or a minute in the air fryer. Quarter of a cup of honey. Quarter of a cup of soy. OK. 
Okay. And a teaspoon of ground ginger. I'll just give it a little bit of a spice, but not spicy. And I'm super lucky. This is local honey from one of my wife's coworkers who has some bees and gives us some awesome local honey. And then we're just gonna go ahead and mix this up. And we're gonna use this as soon as these come out of the air fryer. Another thing I've noticed in the air fryer, you need a little bit of oil. It's gonna help things crisp up. You can use Pam and cooking sprays, which I've used in the past in some of my air fryer videos, but I've noticed they do leave a little bit of a film in the air fryer. So I switched over to using just regular vegetable oil and this cool little pump sprayer. It looks like a perfume sprayer. Ode to vegetable oil. Probably wouldn't sell well. And now I gotta go get the air fryer. This is my air fryer. I bought it for $25 on a flash sale at Best Buy and it's been great to me. I did a review on it. I'll put the link over here for can a $25 air fryer be any good? For our little family, it's perfect. It doesn't have a huge basket, so it might not be big enough for a big family, but this thing's great, man. It is just chugging along and making some great food for me. You could finish these in the oven on broil. You could grill them any way. You're just trying to get color. Doesn't matter how you do it. For me, this air fryer seems like it's gonna do the trick. So we're gonna load these in here. The basket comes out, spritzer. And as you can see, I've got all my stuff in there and you're just gonna give them a little coating. This is gonna really help them crisp up. And it doesn't use much oil. Those little sprays are nothing, not even a teaspoon or a tablespoon or anything. We're gonna go ahead and insert. Temperature wise, we're gonna go to about 360 and we are gonna try these for 10 minutes. Not preheated, just straight in, timer on 10 minutes. After that 10 minutes, we're gonna check them and do our glaze. While we're waiting for this thing to go ahead and cook, or crisp, crisp. While we're waiting for this thing to go ahead and cook, or crisp, crisp cook, I don't know what it is. Dad's gonna entertain you with some juggling. I can't jump. Are you done yet? Are you done yet? How about now? How about now? Is it done yet? I'm just gonna wait here and stare at the camera till it goes ding. It went ding. I'm an idiot. What do I do? Let's check them. Ah, oh, just about ready to be glazed. I'll show you guys one here. Nice, browned. Now we're gonna throw some glaze on it. We are ready to glaze our ribs. We got our glaze here. We're gonna go ahead and take our ribs. I got a little wire rack here so that I don't have to set the basket on top of my countertop and possibly crack it. That can happen. If you put a really hot item on top of granite or solid surface countertops, you can crack them. We got our little glaze here. And we are just gonna brush some right on top of these guys. It's not a super sticky glaze. Perfect. Back in the air fryer. 
for probably another five minutes max. I'll probably check them in between that though. And we wait again for the last minute. We're gonna go ahead and jam this to 400 and hopefully get them nice and crispy brown. That's the goal. I wish you could smell through the camera because this smells awesome. There's like a, a vent in the back that vents the air and vents the smell. Ooh, yeah. While we're waiting for this, I'll tell you a little bit. Sous vide cooking can make anybody seem like a great cook. You don't have to really know what you're doing. Shake some spices on it, stick it in a bag, stick it in the water, stick it in an oven to crisp it, and you're gonna get fantastic food that people are gonna be mind blown by. And if you're a bad cook, that'll freak people out. I'm pretty sure I could even teach my sister how to cook a sous vide meal. That would be pretty fantastic. It would also be hilarious. Me and my sister, yeah, it was, we fought a little, maybe a little scooch, just a little as kids. But I love her now. It's funny how that happens, right? Good timing. Uh, and these are perfect. Let's clear this whole mess away like this. Sous vide and air fried short ribs. I'm gonna get in on close in this. Hold on. I don't even think I need to say anything about these. Look at them. All right, we are going to give a taste and see how these came out. I'm kind of excited. Oh, they got a pull to them. And they're not pot roasty. I just want to take another bite and not talk to you, but I'll talk to you. They are not pot roasty at all. They've got a great texture to them. The soy has a salt to it and the honey has a sweetness. I may adjust the glaze later and you can put any barbecue sauce, glaze, anything you want on them. You don't have to use this little soy, ginger and honey mix. But the one that's got a little sweetness, I might like a little extra sweetness in mine. I may adjust my glaze, but I'm gonna take another bite here and then I'll show you the cross section. Oh. I don't think they can see. Oh, they can. No, look there. That's the camera. And the princess is here as always. Yeah, she has her princess crown on. I'm doing crafts. And she's doing crafts. You guys might have needed to know that. Can you do me a favor? Can you tell them that dad doesn't do outros, so that's it? Dad doesn't do outros, so that's it. For more recipes and videos, visit dadgotthis.com. Be sure you don't miss anything. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the damn bell. Now, I did this wrong, apparently. Come on, you have to do it. It was a double dog dare. I mean, those are the rules.